welcome back to my channel if you are new make sure to hit the subscribe button today we are kicking off day two of greek week if you missed yesterday's video i highly suggest checking it out before you watch this one in that video i am sharing the recruitment process for kent state university going through and joining a sorority so today i have my twin sister madison with me and we are going to be doing a sorority recruitment q a a lot of you guys have requested this video to see the differences in our sororities being at two different schools so I am an Alpha Phi at Kent State. I am a Delta State at Marshall University. And Madison's also an engineering major. So we figured we would do this video. You guys asked for it. I hope you guys enjoy. And if you have any additional questions for either myself or Madison, um, once this video is over, please leave them below and we will get to them. Okay, so the first question is, how do you register for sorority recruitment? So most schools, both of ours, have a Panhellenic Instagram account. So Panhellenic Council basically runs all sororities. It is like the branch, it's like the president basically of all these sororities underneath of it. And most schools have an Instagram account for that Um Panhellenic Council. Mm -hmm. So I recommend following the school that you are going to's Panhellenic Instagram account. They will give updates on what is happening not only on your campus but in all sororities, fraternities, other stuff like that. And they will post on Instagram into their Instagram stories when registration opens yep. for recruitment. There's also going to be like events when you first get on campus where you walk around in every club, sporting event, sorority, like a fraternity. Booth. Yeah, everyone has like a little booth. You're gonna be able to walk around to talk to whoever you're interested in. And if you're not already signed up for recruitment, by the time those events start happening, you can sign up with them there, at least at Kent. Can you do that at Marshall? Like, yes, would it be too late can. to... Okay, so it's not too late if you, like, haven't signed Absolutely. up yet and you're already at school. Um, question number two. Did you know much about the recruitment process prior to going through? No. I did not know a lot about Kent's recruitment process. And honestly, the only sorority I knew anything about was Alpha Phi because one of my best friend Ethan's mom, she was an Alpha Phi at Towson, which is a school here in Maryland. So she explained to me what their philanthropy was and she talked to me about her experience 30 years ago, but that was literally the only thing I knew about it. And I watched a couple YouTube videos, but that was about it. I didn't watch any YouTube videos. You knew nothing going I in? I knew nothing. We knew Absolutely nothing, nothing going in. And <laughs> neither of our parents were in a sorority or fraternity. So, and honestly, we have a few cousins who were in it, but we don't see them regularly. Yeah, I didn't Nor really do we have talk older, to them about it. yeah, we don't have older friends who are in one either, let alone older sisters. It's just the two of us. So, kind of a free for all. Number three, what made you want to go through recruitment? The reason why I wanted to go through recruitment is because being from Maryland and going to a school in West Virginia, it's really hard because most of the people that go to Marshall are from West Virginia. So it's really hard to make new friends there and meet new people, especially me be making girlfriends just because I am an engineering major and it's difficult to do so. So I wanted to go through recruitment just to meet new people, meet new girlfriends and I kind of had the idea in my head like prior to going to school because a lot of girls that we went to high school with were talking about it and they were like, are you going through recruitment? And I was like, I don't know, I guess. Yeah. And all three of my roommates were going through. So I decided, you know what? I might as well go. I might as well see how it is, what happens. And even if I didn't end up finding the sorority for me, at least I would have gone through the process and experienced it. So yeah. Next question. What were you looking for in a sorority? I was looking for just the cliche home away from home, but also just girls who were gonna be there for me all the time. And I really fell in love with Delta Zeta's philanthropy. So that helped me out in picking my sorority. But really, I just wanted to find people who I really connected with. So I was just looking to get involved on campus. Honestly, um, I cheered all throughout high school as did Madison. We were part of honor societies, newspaper. Like I literally did everything in high school and coming into college like with no obligation or being involved in nothing was like not scary weird. to me, but it was really weird. So I knew I wanted to get involved. I did a ton of community service in high school. So I knew I wanted to do a little bit of community service. And obviously it doesn't awesome. hurt to want to find friends. Like I don't think that it's wrong to say I am hoping to meet new, new friends people. and new people because it really is a great way to get involved and meet new faces. How did you know that your sorority was the one for you? I learned our philanthropy. And I immediately knew that that was. Where we should I have said our philanthropies. Alpha Fees is Women's Heart Health, and Delta Zeta's is Speech and Hearing. 
So I immediately fell in love with it. I have a really close connection with it. So therefore I wanted to be a part of it. I wanted to give back to that community and make a difference through our philanthropy. So through that. So you knew that that was when? Yeah. So there's one defining. Not before I even signed up for recruitment, but you know, obviously you have to give it an open mind. So, but you thought you were going to be a Delta Zeta going in. I thought I was. I thought I would be an Alpha Phi before going in because all I knew was Miss Wensloff and she was an Alpha Phi and I was like, she's the best person ever. So if she's <laughs> it, I'm it, which is the raw, like go in with an open mind. I obviously, but like, I think your, your first initial feeling, I do think that that holds some weight. It's kind of like when you're picking a college, once you have that like aha moment and it like yeah. clicks. It's the same thing with sorority life, I think. But I wouldn't say that I knew Alpha Phi was the one for me prior to going in, because I didn't. I really liked Delta Gamma as well, but on preference round, I visited both DG and Alpha Phi, and in one of, like, the, not rituals they do, but they show you, like, a part of their tradition, I guess, and all sororities do that on your preference round, and the song that they sung had a very strong connection to me prior to going through recruitment like in middle school this song was very important to me and so when i heard this song playing like when i walked in i was like oh my god like i asked god for a sign and then he coincidentally like this song was on i was like i believe in signs like that so i was like this is 100 percent the sorority for me and that was before i even went to cdg i saw alpha Phi first on preference round and i walked in and i was like this is it. i saw bz last Okay, next up, what do sororities really want to hear PNMs talk about? So if you don't know what a PNM is, it's a potential new, new member. member. They don't call them recruits at either of our schools. They don't call it Greek life. Those things they say have negative connotations. So we call them PNMs, potential new members, and it's sorority recruitment, not Greek life or rushing. We don't call it rushing, it's there, recruiting. No. I think that, okay, yes, there's going to be some small talk and there's going to be kind of a lot of it the first day, especially open house round because it's really fast. You're filtering through some people and they just want to get like a like basic. 30 minutes you were in there. So it's yeah, really so you're talking to more than one girl. You're not talking to the same girl for 30 minutes, at least on open house round. And they really want to get a feel for who you are and like your initial, um, not your initial experience, but like your first impression, that's what I'm looking for. Your first impression kind of matters. So, you know, yeah. put a smile on and act confident. Um, I talked about my blog, pretty much every person I saw throughout all rounds of it. And they go back and talk about you at the end of the night, you know. And so the next day when I would meet someone new, they would be like, oh, so I heard you had a blog and that you've done this, this, and this. Can you tell me a little bit more about it? So I talked a lot about my blog because if you have something that you can brag about a little bit, and show, hey, I'm pretty awesome. They want to know those kinds it's of things. It's kind of just you like going through like It's like a resume, job interview. Yeah. yeah. And I also talked a ton about baseball because I was so involved with baseball in high school and I had so many community service hours from that and I like really felt at home there. I talked a lot about yeah. that as well because they, they do want to hear about how you are going to be a positive impact on their philanthropy and their community service yeah. and raise money. So if you have any experience like that, I'd recommend talking about Although, that. Like, don't be nervous when you go in. I know a lot of people who are nervous when they go in, but it's really just... It's just talking. It's just it's talking. Just talking. That's it. I know you're meeting new people, and I'm, like, really shy, too. So it... But I was never nervous going going through. It's just... You're just having a conversation you're just meeting a new person who generally seems interested and basically i know a lot of times you have a hard you might have a hard time like asking questions of like what their sorority experience was like but a lot of times they'll do ask you most of the questions so but know. try to ask them questions because on yeah. the third round like either your philanthropy round madison has a philanthropy round kent does not so like sisterhood round for us they're gonna ask you if you have any additional questions like for them Always, always, always ask the girl you're talking to if they lived in the house, and if so, how they liked it, what their experience was like. Ask them that. Ask them why they joined their sorority, why they love being in the sorority that they're in. Get to know them on a personal level, but remember that you're not going to like everyone that you talk to. There are going to be some people where conversation just doesn't flow as easily. Don't make it super evident to them. Like, don't be rude if you are like, oh, I hate this story. I never want to talk to them again. Don't let them know that. Still be respectful. Obviously, like, you know, yeah. be nice, but keep that in mind. And just because you don't have one conversation that flows really well at your sorority that Does still it can be the sorority that you choose. Yeah, it's because out of all those girls, you're not necessarily going to love every single one of them. Yeah. 
So just because you didn't like Sue on the first day doesn't mean you won't love Sally on the second day. Number seven, is being in a sorority expensive? Yes. yes. <laughs> so our parents told us before we went to school, if we wanted to be a part of a sorority, it was up to us to pay for it. Yeah. It would 100% be financially on us, which to me seems fair. Like they are already paying for our education, so they shouldn't have to quote unquote pay for our friends on top of that too. But yeah. it is something that you really need to consider. Like if you already have student loans and are contributing towards your college and you have to pay for recruitment on top of that and being in a sorority, consider those things. Actually consider weigh. Those things. Like, I know we still have those things and we're still in sororities, but it was a huge decision deciding to be in a sorority. It's something that you really need to think about. And I know that a lot of people get other people's opinions and then there's some people who don't want anyone's opinion and just want to do it all by themselves but just take those things into consideration when you're because at the end of the day it is a financial like obligation i know that every yep. school's payment plan is differently and every sorority is different within each school so i know that there is a most expensive sorority at Kent. Alpha Phi is not it, I will tell you that. And there is a least expensive one. There are also inclusive sororities versus non-inclusive. So what that means is that Alpha Phi is an inclusive sorority, which means that when we have a formal or a date party or anything like that, it, it we already paid for it. I don't have to pay extra to do those things because we have one flat fee, um, that's, that stuff is included in our dues. Yep. So Madison School. Mine is not like that, mainly for the reason that like, you don't have, we don't pay for like formal or informal in advance because you don't have to go to those things. So like if she had to, to miss formal because of something, she wouldn't have those to pay Those are optional for things that you get to enjoy and just have fun with your sisters. That isn't something that we require you to go to by any means so therefore we don't require them out front so and to be honest there's pros and cons to both like i said if i had to miss something say i had like a wedding and all of a sudden i couldn't go to my formal it sucks because i already paid for it and i can't get that money back but at the same time if i was paying every three weeks when a date party or something came up i would be like oh my god i have to pay something again so there's pros and cons to we both. only have one a semester so oh. therefore it's not okay well like you know what I, mean. <laughs> I should have said that both of us have positions within our sorority too but i didn't but one other thing i want to touch on is i talked about every sorority being a different price but all sororities have different payment plans so i paid for my sorority in full the first week the first due that came out i paid for the entire school year you can pay semesterly you can pay monthly um and like i said like madison just said you can talk to the treasurer and really figure out a plan that works for you because they will work yeah. with you because they know it is costly. <laughs> Next question said, is your sorority diverse? Honestly, not really. Yes and no. Yes and no, but... Although, I think my sorority is like, not as diverse because West Virginia isn't as yeah, diverse. Yeah, you have to keep in mind where you are because... I would say that we grow up in Maryland and we live in Montgomery County, which I just looked the other day, is the number one most diverse county in Maryland. It's number 27 in the United States. So we are used to living in a very diverse place. Like yep. it is very diverse where we live. And when I went to Kent, I was like, it's not that diverse here. And all my roommates were like, really? This is the most diverse place I've ever been. So it, you have to put those things into perspective. Like depending on where you grow up, it may seem super diverse. And we also don't go to school in the South. So it's obviously different like there as it's well. Different, but obviously like our sorority, but sorority they're not, isn't like the stereotypical blonde with blue eyes. Like everyone has to look a certain way. Like that's not, not the case way. either. And they're not, sororities do not choose you based on what color you are at all. But there are obviously going to be more sororities with more diversity than others. Next up, is there hazing? No. no, not at either of our schools. I know that Kent has like a zero tolerance policy for hazing. Now I'm not saying that that is true for every school because we do know people from other schools where like that's not the case. But at our universities, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Next up, how often do you have chapter meetings? When you're a new member, you have them about once a week for like, ours were so short. They were like maybe 15 minutes, 30 minutes max um, once a week. Then once you become initiated member, then you have 
a chapter meeting about every other week for about 30 minutes to an hour. At Kent, when you are a new member, you have an extra meeting every week on top of your chapter meeting. So we have chapter every Sunday night and then new members would meet like 30 minutes before that and they would get a little bit more educated on the history of Alpha Phi, the background of it, what we stand for, just like, you know, letting people mesh and like find their girls within that sorority, I mm -hmm. guess. Um, so we would meet like maybe at seven o'clock and then at 7.30 chapter would start. But we have it every, we, we have chapter every Sunday. We don't have that. You don't have a chapter meeting with the rest of the girls in your sorority until you get initiated. Right. Um, someone else asked, is it time consuming? So yes and no. It depends on what stage of the semester you are into. So I would say yes. on average, what I spend- What stage of the new member process you are yeah. in. Yeah, and I would say I spend about one to three hours doing sorority stuff a week, and that's in chapter included. Some weeks, all I have is chapter. Other weeks, I have chapter. We have a date party, and I have to do two community service hours. It just depends, but typically there is chapter and then one other thing at least at kent that i have to do so like maybe i have to support another fraternity go to their fundraiser sure. something like that um what about you you guys this is a little more structured ours is a bit more structured when you're a new member you they can't really force you to go to anything like other than like your chapter meeting but we do have a social every thursday with another fraternity you'll have your chapter meetings about once a week when you're a new member and then you may have tabling for your service hours every every now and then you'll do that and that's about it first semester you're gonna have you're gonna have like obviously pledging and initiation and then you're gonna have formal but other than that it's nothing so how much time would you say you spend there on average a week doing first semester week? when you're a new member probably only like one to two hours the second semester when you're an initiated member a lot more just because you have so give us a rough estimate i don't know because then we had greek week and it's but you don't have to participate in that but i did so i was had a lot more things well that would be how much time you spent there i spent roughly about two hours a day there second semester holy cow i'm just saying two hours was because i chose to be a part of greek sing which is like kind of like a palm routine it's like a dance routine for like a competition that we do and i chose to do that one because i could go be with my sisters i could work out at the gym and it was something fun and it was kind of like cheer that i you yeah. know obviously didn't do in college so i chose to do that you don't have to do that if you don't so Choose we have that yeah. your schedule is basically free we have but. like other sororities and fraternities where we will par make a team and participate in their event so some people there's a dance competition there's a lip sync competition they have a music video it's one just a really fun there's time, all though. different things across because every sorority and fraternity on campus like has something like that so if you choose to participate and be on that team or even if you decide to get involved in your sororities like i know that we have a volleyball team a basketball team if you decide to be on those teams and participate in other sorority and fraternity stuff then yes you will have more of an obligation I did none of that stuff just because I worked and I felt that I couldn't do it all like that was where I had to give was to not be on a basketball team or something which is fine some people have the time I but I didn't but like <laughs> she was on the like the dance the thing. dance team and because I didn't do anything fun. like that and what is something you wish you knew before you went through recruitment I will say my number one thing I wish I knew is that when you join a sorority, you're not going to like every single person. There are almost 200 girls in Alpha Phi at Kent, and I had this silly misconception that I would love every single one of those. That is not true. I think that, yes, in some cases, recruitment is like, quote unquote, buying your friends. But more than anything, I feel like recruitment is just giving you a smaller pool of girls to make friends within. So at Kent, say there's 20,000 girls. Alpha Phi just gives me 200 girls and it's like, okay, make friends within these 200 girls. You're not going to love every single person because that's just unrealistic. Like that's not... You wouldn't love all those people in everyday life. So just because they're your sorority sister doesn't mean, oh my God, they're going to be in your wedding someday. And I had that idea that everyone would love me and I would love everyone. And that's just not the case. You're going to have, like my sorority only has like 50 girls. So you're going to find those like 10, 20 girls. girls that you really love to hang out with. But everyone else, 
you may not have that close of a connection with. You may still, you know, be friendly to each other, but you, you're not that close it's with. It's nothing more than that. Yep. Next up, how do you find your people throughout the recruitment process? Honestly, I did not. I know a lot of girls make friends within their group that they're in because you are with a group when you tour the houses and stuff and you stay with that group throughout the whole week of recruitment. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of girls find friends through that. I honestly didn't. Um, I didn't really talk to a lot of the girls around me and maybe that was my mistake. Maybe I should have been more open-minded and talked to a lot more of them. But I also had my roommate Lauren with me in my group. So I like clung to her because I knew her. She was familiar. We were obviously good friends. So I had no one going in. So I kind of, you just went through recruitment and did your thing. I just went through recruitment on my own. I kind of wish I had someone to like cling to. Although I did meet a couple girls who are in my sorority now and we're great friends, but I didn't have you that. Didn't know that at the time. I didn't know it. Yeah. I will also say when it comes to finding your people, once you are initiated, let me know when you find out because I have lots of friends that are older than me, but I still don't feel like I have found my people necessarily within my um, pledge class. Should I be nervous about not getting a bid? No. no, but do keep in mind that not everyone gets a bid. So keep that in mind. There are going to be some girls who don't get called back to any houses. Number 15, is it worth going through recruitment as a junior? Well, we're obviously not juniors, so we can't speak too much for that. But I would say go through. If you are, if you want to go through, you want to get involved, you want to meet I new people, say yes, do it. Just because. Oh wait, can... did I say no? I meant, I meant yes. Sorry. No, you did say, you did say yes. Oh. But I'm saying yes, just because you can meet new people and you can make connections, and that can really help you get a job later in life. You can meet people, and you can meet. Their parents who have great connections through what you want to do so it could really help you out the number one reason I like being in a sorority is not for the friends not for the philanthropy I love being in a sorority for the networking aspect and the fact that it really is a great way to meet people who know people and just to meet other alpha fees not even like at your school but globally yeah. so that is what i love networking so i think that madison has a really good point with that next up how far in advance do you know the themes to dress for so they're not necessarily themes they give you guidelines on what to wear yeah. at least at our schools yeah. we do not have to wear a pnm t-shirt like they don't give us a t-shirt that you have to wear on open house round we could wear whatever now some colleges especially in the south they're gonna give you shirts to wear and they're gonna like be like okay figure out how to make this look cute we don't have that so i can't really speak for like how far in advance they give you those shirts because i don't know but about like three weeks before recruitment we had a meeting for all the people who signed up for recruitment and we went to that and they gave us the rundown on what each day was going to be like what was going to happen and guidelines for what to wear so they were like maybe flowy pants and a skirt yeah. the first day the second day like a sundress or a skirt and the third day a little bit nicer you know your bring your a game heels a dress something like that yep. we had a sorority 101 like lesson Le yeah basically like a kind of like a live q a where they tell you what to wear um and can answer any questions you have about sorority life but I unfortunately did not go to that because I hadn't signed up for recruitment. So you can still sign up for recruitment after, after those that. times, but uh, you'll be a little confused going in. So watch a video. What is your favorite recruitment memory, not including bid day? I can easily think of mine. I can think of mine. Too. Okay, so what is it? I think on philanthropy night, I met my big Allie, and when I met her, and she was the person like I talked to. I knew that that was a good fit for me and that that was the story I wanted to go to. So meeting that person that you really click with, I think is... So what's ironic about that is that the girl who prepped me was my big Allie. Both of us, our big names are Allie and I met Allie the day before she is who prepped me. And that's not what I was going to say, but I that was like when I was like, oh my God, this is where I should be. But 
um, when we finished up our, like when we got our initial bid, you know, like when you open up the envelope and you're like, ah, I got it. You can feel it in that moment. And just like, like coming back and seeing Olivia, Lauren, and Emma, we did like a roomies reveal. It's on my YouTube channel. And just like seeing how excited they were, like even though we didn't end up in the same sororities, which is good. I also recommend that don't talk to your best friend or your roommate going through because you don't want to join a sorority just because just because, just because Sally's joining it too. You really want to have your own opinion. Um so all of I us have that, but all four of my like all four of us, we all ended up overlapping once. So everyone was going there was a chance that we could have all been in one, but it didn't happen that way. But I will say just like them running back and like being so excited like I was so happy for them and it was just a really fun clip of the video so that was probably my favorite memory next up do certain sororities fit different stereotypes I say no. yes um I think that the stereotype from school to school is very different so what yes. might be the dumb blonde sorority at one school is not necessarily at another but I will say that at my school like specifically some people are like oh like this is the smarter sorority or not like this is the rich pretty girl sorority because people will say that and in that aspect I don't necessarily think it but you have to remember that there are going to be a few girls that fit that molds that are like yeah. snobby stuck up but that's in any group of girls in any sorority at any school so yes Sororities and no. are just so different from school to school yeah and like Delta from, Zeta at her school so different than Delta Zeta at my exactly. school exactly and it's really weird we've had a lot of like officers who go to other schools who have met other Delta Zetas and it's really it's so different from each school yeah. so so yes and no so so yeah this person also asked me can you be bold in your faith while being in a sorority so can you be faithful and yeah. will people judge that absolutely 100% yes I would say that most sororities than not probably encourage you and want you to be expressive of your faith if it's something that you're passionate about are they going to force beliefs on you no. no is any voodoo shit gonna happen no, no. <laughs> but i will say that i think there are i think more times than not a sorority is probably where you're going to meet girls with like-minded faiths and beliefs as you yep especially in the obviously South. you don't really know that going th through recruitment it's you gonna be something you, don't you figure ever, out once yeah. you're actually in it and like have friends in it but yeah but i think any sorority if you meet the right girls and you're choose the right sorority they are going to encourage you to do and whatever support you, you in yeah. whatever you want the last question is what to wear so like I said at the beginning Watch of this video, video. <laughs> Wednesday Thursday and Friday I'm going to be dedicating videos to this so I'm going to have it's gonna be 10 plus outfits so like some of them might have like 12 15 I'm not 100% sure yet because I haven't filmed them when we're filming this but um, I'm going to do 10 outfits for open house sisterhood and preference i know some schools like madison have um philanthropy round kent does not so i'm just gonna stick with those three rounds and for bid day your sorority is going to give you a shirt all right guys that is going to be it for today's video i really hope you guys enjoyed if you have any other questions regarding greek life for either madison or myself leave them below i will have madison answer your questions if you have any marshall specific thank you so much and we will talk to you soon bye, bye guys, guys.